This is the famous nickel coin. It's been passed from hand to hand for decades, thrown, lost, found in the dirt, and still retains its original appearance. It succeeds in doing so because it is composed of, surprise, surprise, nickel, which protects against corrosion. In fact, we should be grateful for this shiny silver and white metallic element. Well, you now, yes, you, you're watching this video right now while eating something, aren't you? So when you're washing knives, spoons, forks, pots and pans, all steel utensils in general, remember it's nickel that keeps it from rusting. This is its most popular application. Two-thirds of all nickel is used to make stainless steel. Of course, it's not just kitchen knives at all. Wherever there is contact with aqueous media, nickel comes in handy. Dishwashers, refrigerators, ovens, dental files, car catalysts, piping, nuclear reactors, aircraft blades, turbine rotor discs, combustion chamber parts. Wait, did you see the title of the video? Why do I need this smarter, smarter everyday day. stuff? Wait, 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 wait. Let me try to show you the importance of nickel because the whole world needs it. In the late 90s, mankind consumed 1 billion metric tons of nickel. In 20 years, as the economy has developed, the need for the shining element has doubled. Now the world needs more than 2 billion tons annually. There is a lot of money behind these charts. One ton of nickel now costs around $20,000, with the price only going up in times of global crises. During the crisis of 2007, it used to go up to $50,000, and now when February the 24th caused a break in the supply chain, its price has jumped up to $30,000 again. Okay, it's used in a lot of areas, costs a shitload of dollars. What's space got to do with it? What are you on about? Just so you understand, 100,000 tons of nickel sulfate can create 700,000 batteries for electric cars. And look at the top countries that mine nickel. Indonesia alone produced 1.6 million metric tons in 2022. Imagine how many batteries that equals to. Forget the batteries. If we take the price even as high as $20,000 per ton, it turns out that Indonesia's nickel production made a gain of $32 billion. It's an insane amount of money that could feed luxurious Los Angeles for three years straight. Such money covers all costs of the mining companies, pays tens of thousands of people for their work, which further affects the economy of a certain country and worldwide as well. What does space have to do with it? Ah, <sighs> all right. The point is that mankind will start mining the required elements like nickel right in outer space. And it's not going to happen sometime far from now. The project has already started. And that's going to completely overturn the established economy. In this video, I will tell you about a treasure that wanders among the stars, the holy grail for Earth's economy. For that, we need to go quite high. Higher, even higher, and a tad bit more. Right, there we go. We need to move towards Mars' orbit, go a little further, and before reaching Jupiter's orbit, half a billion kilometers away from the Sun, we will find the target we need. A wandering boulder, asteroid coded number 16, with the mysterious name Psyche. There was one simple fact that prompted me to make the video about this rock. The value of the cobble is estimated at 10 quintillion dollars. This seemingly made-up number looks like this. By comparison, the world economy is worth a hundred trillion dollars. That is, this pebble here is worth 10,000 times more than everything the human race creates. Couldn't you have found some rock closer, like something in Earth's orbit? 
Why go so far away? The fact is that Psyche is unique in its own way. Unlike most other asteroids made up of rock or ice, Psyche is made entirely of iron and nickel. And now you understand why there was an intro at the beginning about nickel, its importance, prevalence and impact on the real economy of each country and the world as a whole. You might already be guessing that what is said in this video is not limited to one single element, nickel. Space is a sealed treasure trove of iron, cobalt, palladium, platinum, gold, and who the hell knows what else is hidden in it. Humanity is Indiana Jones in this story. Back to this rock called Psyche, which I guess is more correct to call a piece of metal than a rock. This is a huge ball, or rather an ellipsoid, with a diameter of 200 kilometers. Its size is often compared with the state of Massachusetts. Imagine a mine with valuable metals the size of Massachusetts, or even the whole Crimea. Well, 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 who's his psyche? Hey, who's his psyche? Answer, whose orbit is it in? Answer me, why the hell did you draw in the video that it's orbiting Mars? Um, well, yes, at this point in time, there are Martian bases there, Martian document supply, and you can't enter its airspace without Mars permission. It was taken illegally. Psyche is Jupiter's. Draw as I wish, fix it. But I'm broadcasting from Mars. I could go to jail for this sort of thing, and videos would stop coming out altogether. And what difference would it make? Would my drawing change the reality of existence and Psyche magically become Jupiter's? Fix it! Fix it! Fix it now, you bastard! And besides its economic purpose, there is another one, an exploratory one, which could unlock the mystery of the universe, or at least of planet Earth. Unless you're a fan of flat Earth theories... One, two, three! We're crazy! Do you know that there is a sphere at the center of the Earth with a temperature near hell? And all the available data on the temperature and composition of the core is approximate, derived from various clever models. Well, simply because it is difficult to approach the core of the Earth with a thermometer or take a sample for examination. Well, so far there is only speculation that the composition of the core is an iron-nickel alloy, which, as you may have guessed, is expected to be found on the asteroid Psyche. In other words, there is a hypothesis that the core of Psyche was once red-hot, like the core of our planet, but it's frozen for some reason. It means it can be accessed, samples taken, and another mystery of the universe lifted. You could say Psyche is the Earth that failed. Asteroid number 16 is not just an asteroid, it's a protoplanet. Exciting and beautiful at the same time. Yeah. Oh, I wish I'd been born a little later. As you can tell from my mood, we're getting to the practical part. What, how and when will people start mining ore in space? Well, well, we'll have to cool down the excited minds a bit with the harsh reality where real actions are much slower than in the world of ideas. In fact, the asteroid Psyche hasn't even been photographed yet, and what I showed you was a model. Well, I mean, the asteroid is a whopping half a billion kilometers away from us. And no, don't no think that I've been bullshitting bullshitting you for 10 minutes straight with some bullshit. kind of fiction. Bullshit. A team of enthusiasts has been trying to turn fiction into reality for a long time. They discussed ideas as far back as 10 years ago, in 2011. They described a preliminary 256 pages in four years, after which they were pre-approved by NASA. Then scientists, engineers, project managers began to pile into the detailed design and the documentation grew to a thousand pages. And in 2017, NASA finally incorporated these intelligent space marines into their program. It took them six years just to get the resources for their project. Then the real preparations began, like building a vehicle like this. 
So, on the 12th of October 2023... Their gizmo, called, who would have thought, Psyche, has set off from Earth to orbit a precious asteroid. Estimated time of arrival is August of 2029. Well, what did you expect? It's almost three astronomical units from Earth to the destination point, a unit I recently learned myself as if it was taken from Star Wars. The distance is about this many kilometers or miles. However, they are not yet going there to mine ore. It's not a miner that's being sent now, but a scouting satellite. When it arrives at asteroid 16, the unit will use all sorts of clever rulers and magnifiers, all that to just understand what this piece of metal is. Then again, when in 2029 this data comes back to Earth, it will take five more years to study it, another five years to think what to do with it, to calculate the feasibility of extraction. It will take six years to fly there, to collect the ore, six years to fly back. After all, it should also be taken into account that if we manage to extract materials in space, their price will fall because, well, supply will increase and nickel for $20,000 will cost not $20,000 but roughly $10,000. Is it profitable economically? We won't get the answer until 2040 at the earliest. Yes, of course, we shouldn't expect competition from space for another 20 years, but the idea itself, the very fact that we are now discussing such things, not in terms of science fiction, but in terms of project profitability, is simply fascinating. My point is that the space race, or space cold war, has already started. Americans, Chinese and Arabs are already hanging out on Mars, Colonization, well, let's say space exploration, is already in full swing. Yes, Psyche specifically is a far horizon event, but there are plenty of objects in space that could be useful to us on Earth. And these objects, though not as immensely rich, are playing closer. Take the Moon, for example. And it is only a matter of time before the achievements in space will have an impact on the development of the Earth Kingdom, on the economies of countries. Hundreds of years later, useful materials are determined not by God and the will of chance, but by the development of society and the power of engineering. And I wish we had discussed the state of the space front more in our info field, rather than the actual one. May we live long enough to see the wonders of human thought. But first we must see... Psyche. You know who to share this video with. We're saying a great thank you to the folks who support us on Patreon. And I'm the Researcher. Thank you.